um, they have a hard time finding books at a low reading level that are of subjects that are interesting to them. So we created a special collection of books that have interesting subject matter for people that are older but have a lower reading level so that they can improve their reading skills. Summer reading. We are very excited about our summer reading programs here every year, and we really can't express the value enough. So many studies have shown that if children don't read in the summer, they are going to be behind from their peers who do read when they come back to school in the fall. Um, summer reading encourages children to make reading a lifelong habit, and it provides them with a safe, supervised activity in the summertime, which is very important. Um, Summer reading loss is a term for uh, what children, the skills that they lose when they don't read in the summertime. And children who don't read in the summertime lose more and more skills each year because they can't catch up in the fall. When they get to school, their peers who have been reading are already ahead. So, and by the time they hit sixth grade, they're shown to be two years behind their peers who are reading in the summertime. We are doing more with less at the Hazel Park Library. In uh, the past year, we've circulated nearly 100,000 items in our library. We've had about 3,000 people attend programs. We've had over 100 programs for all ages. And for many people in our community, we are their number one source of entertainment and a social outlet. The economic impact of libraries has been very well shown. Um, we bring people into the city from other cities and when they're here using the library, they're spending money in the local businesses. Uh, there was a study done in 2007 uh, showing that having a local library does make the community stronger, and having a good quality library increases property values. So even for people who don't necessarily use libraries themselves, it's still good for their own property values to have a good library in the city. And we have had resounding support from the business community. These are pictures of just a few of the businesses that are actively advocating for our village uh, by displaying library desk signs in their doors. And many of them are also distributing li literature about the village in their place of business. So we've been very grateful to the business community. Um, property taxes allow local governments and the library to do our jobs without property taxes. Property taxes, we cannot do what we're here to do. Um, all local government entities are facing structural deficits due to the recession and the housing crisis. Uh, factors that are blocking our full revenue are caps on assessment increases, the headly tax rate reductions, and reductions in state revenue sharing. These are the same factors that caused the police and fire to need a special village earlier this year. Uh, this shows how the Hazel Park Memorial Library is funded. 82% of our funding comes from local property taxes. Um, nothing else even comes close to supporting us in the way that property taxes do. Uh, the next largest area of our funding is penal fines, and those come from uh, property, or, I'm sorry, traffic tickets being written. And we've been seeing a decline in penal fines recently as well. They're down about $1,000 each year. And that's because there are less police officers out writing tickets. And people are also less able to pay their tickets when they get them. <coughs> uh, there is a corresponding handout on the table because I realize it's difficult to see all these numbers on the screen. <coughs> but these are the financial projections for the library based on what the county is telling us the property values are going to do in the next several years. Um, we're showing that if the property values decline in the way that they're projected to, by the end of fiscal year 2012, which is June 30th, 2012, we're looking at a deficit of about $14,000. And by fiscal year 2013, $114,000. That's if our spending stays the same as it is right now. And this is another way of looking at the decrease in funding that we're facing. Uh, the top number is 2010, what we saw, and it's scheduled to just continue to decline a total of 62% through 2014. This slide shows how the Hazel Park Library compares in per capita funding with other nearby cities of a similar size and population. 
you can see that we bring in um, about half of the dollar amount per capita as our neighbor Ferndale. We're bringing in $29.67. Ferndale is bringing in $59.43. Um, the <coughs> statewide average for our size of city is $45.09. And in Oakland County, it's $56. And we're not asking for more money but we don't want to make the gap even higher. So we're just trying to maintain where we are right now. State aid is what we received from the state to help us operate. In 2000, we were receiving 50 cents per capita. In 2011, we're down to about 19 cents per capita. So you can just see that every area of our revenue is really taking a hit. We're really losing money on all levels. What we're proposing is 0.48 mills, which will average less than a dollar per month for the average household. And uh, we're doing that to hope to maintain current staffing hours, services, and programming. And we're trying to maintain our Library of Michigan quality services audit checklist sta status. And that is the basic level of services that the state says we should be offering to our people. Well, we've already done to save money uh, this year, the staff is taking 10 unpaid furlough days. Those are days that we were open in the past that were now closed. Uh, we've eliminated Sunday hours, drastic reductions in our book budget, deferred maintenance on the building, and we're now charging fees to non-residents to use our computers. We never used to do that in the past, but we're now being forced to do that. Without the new millage, we're looking at reductions in hours, cutbacks in staff, Less money to buy the materials that people want to need. Elimination of programs for all ages. Fewer or no deliveries from other libraries. And less money to repair or replace computer equipment when it breaks. And without funding, a library cannot survive. Once a library closes its doors, it's very difficult to reopen them. This is an image of the McGregor Library, which is in Highland Park. Uh, they were forced to close their doors in 2003 due to a lack of funding. They are still closed to this day. There have been many organized efforts by uh, very well-organized groups to try to reopen these doors, but it's just been really, really difficult and they have not been able to do it. So there's actually a building, the books are still in there, and people can't read them because the doors are closed. So we do not want to see that happen to Hazel Park. But the answers are not in the numbers, they're in the people. And in the <coughs> world where knowledge is power, libraries make everyone more powerful. And we don't just offer computers or books, but we offer the people to help you use the computers and find the right resources that you need. Um, libraries are part of the American dream. They offer free access to all, and they offer opportunity to all. So we are proposing the 0.48 mills just to try to maintain our services as best we can and get through this difficult economic time. And now we'll take your questions. Is that the 0.48, is that uh bring you up to a maximum that you could assess? Yes. Under the current state law, we can only collect up to two mills, and we're currently receiving about 1.5 mills, so that will bring us up to like 1.99. Um, when the library was originally established as its own entity in 1994, um, the voters approved 1.8 mills, and due to the heavy rollbacks, it's gone down to the 1.5. So we're basically going back up to what the voters originally approved and then just a little tiny bit more. So, and it will give us the best possible chance of maintaining our services. What, what can we do to increase those numbers even though they're, they're, they're way down right now? Um, that would require a change in state law, unfortunately. So um, we're kind of stuck with the two mil limit as it is right now. Um, and then the only other things we have a very active friends group that is getting better and better at doing fundraising, and that's another source of income for us. So um, a concerned citizen could certainly join our friends group and participate in the fundraisers that are happening to help us out too. Thank you. Jessica, the two, two mills, 
that were set at, isn't there another way other than going through the state that we would be able to increase that? Like putting it to a vote or? Um, the Public Act, Public Libraries Act of 164 lays it out that two mills is the yeah, most. So. Um, the only other option uh, would be to ban with other area libraries and create a district library. District libraries are able to collect up to four mills under state law, but that would require a big change in the way that we are structured, which is you know maybe something that we could look at in the future, but it would require participation in other communities as well. How would you do that? Like if, like say Ferndale and Hazel Park joined together, what would they have to do? Uh, we would have to have a vote, I believe, amongst all of the area communities that would be involved. It would require guidance from an attorney, obviously, and I believe it would have to go on a ballot for each independent city that wanted to do that. The friends group do, um, do have some yard signs, and um, we're having a special friends group meeting on October 24th here at the library at 6 o'clock, and they're also going to be organizing and um, they're distributing um, door hangers throughout the community, but contacting the friends would be the way to get a yard sign. Or the library staff isn't allowed to distribute them while we're on the clock, but I know um, we can usually help you to, to get to the signs. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of these guys again, Yes, yes, the library board members also can help you with that. Have you gone to any of the schools and talked to the schools, talked to the kids and mm -hmm. yeah. the teachers? And um, we have a member of the Friends Group that is going to be going to a school board meeting to talk to the school administration. You know, it's tonight, so. Yeah, yeah. And then um, we also have um, 
relationships with Head Start. We've had flyers go out to Head Start parents, and we have a few other teachers that have been distributing um, to their the parents from the classrooms. So we're doing as much as we can with the parents. Thank you everybody so much for coming and there's cider and donuts and um, some more information on the table in the back of the room.